The Battle of Mbabo was fought 6 June 1882, between the Shuan forces of Negus Menelik II and the Gojame forces of Negus Tekel Hamanot. The forces fought to gain control over the Oromia region south of the Jibe River. The Gojame forces under Tekel Hamanot were defeated. This is one of the three battles which Donald Donham lists that led to Shuan supremacy over the rest of Ethiopia. Background South of Gojam, across the Abe River, and southwest of Shewa, lay the fertile Jibe region and the gold deposits beyond. Both polities craved control of these resources in order to assert dominance over the rest of Ethiopia. Of the two, the Gojam had the earlier start and better position. As early as 1810, a large volume of luxury trade passed north through Gojam to the coast of the Red Sea far more than passed east through Shewa to the coast. Negus Bofor of Limuen area maintained good relations with the contemporary governor of Gojam. A letter survives from his son Abibagabo to De Jasmish Goshu's Yuda, seeking an alliance against a mutual foe. The armies of Shewa and Gojam had clashed earlier in 1882. The Shuam was led by Ras Gobanadaka and the Gojam by Ras Darasu. A deputy of Negus Tekel Hamanot, Rasko Barna had forced his opponent to surrender the tribute he was bringing back to Tekel Hamanot. Humiliated, Tekel Hamanot exchanged angry words with his peer, Menelik II, which resulted with the two potentates leading their armies to face one another at Mbabo near the Gudur River. The Battle The battle began at 10 a.m. with the Gojame cannons firing at the enemy. The guns of both sides did little damage, and soon were inoperable. After a volley of rifle fire, soldiers on both sides charged and engaged their opponents in what Harold Marcus describes as a fierce day-long battle of hand-to-hand -hand combat. The troops under his son, Ras Bezaber, surrendered and were taken prisoner. Although Ras Darasu continued to fight, a cavalry charge led by Ras Gobana on his flank ended their resistance, and the battle was over. More than half the Gojame force was lost during the battle. The Shuin suffered 913 killed and 1,648 wounded. In victory Menelik was prepared to be magnanimous, Marcus states. Menelik allowed the common soldiers to return to their farms and plough their lands before the rainy season. For his vital role in the conflict, Menelik awarded Ras Gobana the governorship of the Jibe region, making the Ras potentially the most powerful man in Shewa, after Negus Menelik. However, there was one exception to Menelik's magnanimity. According to a Ramo tradition, Tekel Hamanot had been captured by a slave named Sambita, who did not know the identity of his prisoner. Rasmong Ashara T. Kam did recognize Sambito's prisoner, bought his captive for ten Maria Teresa Talas, and led him to Ras Gobana's tent. Gobana, on seeing the Negus, called to him in Amharic Gojame, Bring me the plate, responding to a boast Tekel Hamanot had made before the two armies had clashed. After the battle Ras Gobana will carry my mitered baking tray back to Gojam. Sambator also received his freedom and was made a fitorary for capturing the enemy Negus. However, Emperor Johannes IV, their overlord, was outraged at his two vassals openly at war with each other and marched to Wurilu, just inside Menelik's borders, where he demanded the release of Tekel Hamanot and his family. There the emperor hammered out a compromise. Johannes would take a Gaulmeda from Negus Tekel Hamanot and wallow from Negus Menelik. Menelik would surrender the arms he captured to Johannes. Lieutenant Ras Alula Ngida, and a peace was cemented with several dynastic marriages, including Negus Menelik to the daughter of a noble family from the emperor's own domain, Taita Betul.